when you seek God daily, and I do believe that you're seeking God day by day, moment by moment, but when your heart seeks Him constantly, you've got to know that there is such a radiance that comes about. If Jesus was transformed while He prayed, and He's the Son of God, how much more are we going to be transformed when we pray? The countenance of the Holy One is upon us. leads to boldness prayer leads to boldness and boldness is necessary to bring freedom to the darkness that's all around I've already shared with you a couple different testimonies but prayer is what's going to lead you Andrew into boldness the boldness of the Lord that is when you walk a prayerful life you walk a life that's filled with God's boldness intimacy comes from a prayerful life and that prayerful life is going to bring you into the courage that God has let's turn to Acts chapter 4 and in verse 13, this is now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, and they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. When they saw the boldness, boldness is described and defined as strong, courageous, and brave. Say strong, strong. courageous. And brave. Say, I'm bold for Jesus. Which means, which means I'm strong, courageous, and brave. Say that over yourself. I'm bold for Jesus. Which means I'm strong, courageous, and brave. So when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, Peter representing faith, John representing intimacy, when they saw the boldness of these two men, they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained. They marveled. They were filled with wonder and astonishment. And they said, they realized, what is it with these two men? But they realized they have been with Jesus because they have been with Jesus there is a boldness that they carry that is different from what everyone else seems to carry the same is true for us prayer leads to boldness it's going to lead to a bold life the Bible says in Proverbs 28 and in verse 1 the wicked flee though no one pursues Yet the righteous are as bold as a lion. See, in the day that we live in, God wants you to be so bold for him. Not stupid, not, you know, just irresponsible and just, but bold. Bold for Christ. I just read to you a few definitions of what that meant. Repeat it with me. Strong, courageous, and brave. Strong, courageous, and brave. Do we not need to be strong in this day and hour? in the Lord, courageous in the Lord, and brave in the Lord. Absolutely. Would you be willing to be one that has such a prayer life uh, that that prayer life gives you such boldness that you will step out and say whatever it needs to be or be the hands and feet by just dialoguing and sharing what God has for them? Would you be that individual? Because we need that. We need the whole body of Christ to say, I'm in. I'm in. I can, there cannot be timidity and intimidation. There cannot be this. There cannot be, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I don't want to. You have to see it for what it is. They're souls. They are souls. And some people that do not follow after Christ, there is a literal heaven. There is a literal hell. And we need to be more concerned with their souls than we are with hurting their feelings. Isn't that true? So, Bold, okay, boldness is strong, courageous, and brave. So I already read to you Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. We know that. Joshua 1, 9. Joshua 1, 9 says, be strong and courageous. This is the instruction of the Lord for us to be strong and to be courageous and not to be afraid. Amen. Not to be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. Does his word lie? No. Does it ever change? 
No. So therefore, the word of God says, I'm going to be with you everywhere you go. If he's going to be with you everywhere you go, and you've already said yes to him, you've already said, no matter what, Lord, I'm serving you. No matter what, I'm going to be bold for you. No matter what, I'm going to make sure my life counts, right? The song that we sang, right? Let our lives preach the gospel. Let us not be what is remembered, but let Christ be remembered through us. Let the legacy of Christ live on through us, even after we have gone with the Lord. But that kind of a radical life is only going to be had when someone on this side of eternity says, Jesus, all for you. Today, not one day, but today, I live for you completely, sold out for you. So Joshua 1, 9, he says, I'm going to be with you everywhere you go. I love this word because he encourages us to say, and he says, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So if he's telling us to be strong and courageous, do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid. That's because there's going to be opportunity to to be this way, right? To be discouraged. There's going to be opportunity to be afraid. There's going to be opportunity to walk in fear. There's going to be opportunity. But you know what? You rise up in strength in the Lord and you say, oh no, devil, you don't get to have me. You don't get to have my life. You don't even get to have one moment. And if need be, you call a trusted friend and you pray together and you don't think yourself as an island just all by yourself, but you get that power of agreement and you make sure that as you're in agreement with that individual that you trust, that you know you're you're not going to be picked off. You're not going to be by the wayside, just the only one and embarrassed to say so. The Bible says to be strong and courageous. If he's telling us to do this, therefore he knows and he understands that the enemy is right there trying to cause you to do the very opposite spirit. He's trying to do the very opposite spirit. There's no shame in that. You have to realize he wouldn't have told us to be strong and courageous if we don't need to try to be that because the enemy tries to come in with the opposite, right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Ephesians 6.10, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm just giving you some scripture that's backing up your boldness for Christ. I said strong, I said courageous, and I said brave. Strong, courageous, and brave. God wants brave soldiers that are not afraid of what man's going to say or what man might do. God wants brave soldiers. Amen? So, one more scripture is in Philippians 4.13, very common scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When he calls you to it, you are already equipped for it. Say, because he's called me to it, I'm equipped for it. No matter what he's called me to, I'm equipped for. Doesn't matter if you think you are or not. Doesn't matter if you feel like you are or not. You are, because his word already says so. Boldness that we've been talking about manifests when your life has been with Jesus. I want you to remember this now. I want you to turn to Acts and chapter 3. Just one chapter. Turn one chapter, Acts chapter 3. I'm going to read to you verses 1 through 8. Boldness manifests when you have been with Jesus. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Went up at the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John, went about into the temple asking for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us, bold, boldness, right? Look at us. And he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I, give, what I have I give to you. He says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, rise up and walk. He was bold to speak the truth. He says, I may not have what you're needing and what you're asking for. But what I do have I'm going to give. Every single one of you in this room has the spirit of God. And you have it to give. He said, he, so then he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. It wasn't until after he spoke the word that his bones became strong and received strength. Not before, but after. After he spoke the words and after he took him by the hand and said, now let's get up. Faith is going to require you risking it. Say, I, but when I'm with Jesus, I know that he spoke to me and I'm going to do what he's told me to do. And so this man gets up. He's leaping. He stood and he walked and he entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. He was walking and leaping. Amen? Amen. 
Because he was with Jesus. Let's go back. How do you, what do you mean he was with Jesus? Let's go back. Verse 1. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. They made prayer a focus. He was transformed because he was a man of prayer at this point. Now, there was a day when Peter was not so into prayer, and he was a little bit more impulsive. But Peter learned that when he would be a person of prayer, he's going to hear the word of God, and he's going to do the word of God, and you're going to get God kind of results. Right, right? now, we're going to put pause there. I want to turn to Luke and in chapter 9. I want to prove to you that when you are a person of prayer, you're going to walk in boldness. Luke 9 and in verse 28. Luke 9, 28. This is at the transfiguration. It says, now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that he took Peter and John and James and he went up on the mountain to pray. Okay, this is Jesus. And Jesus prayed. First of all, if Jesus prayed, should not we? He prayed and the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. He was transformed when he was talking to God, his very countenance changed. It says he prayed and the appearance or his countenance, the countenance of his face was altered. It was changed when he prayed and his robe became white and glistening. It didn't happen before he prayed. It happened while he prayed. Do you not know that when you're praying, your countenance changes? When you pray, your countenance changes. Your boldness for the Lord increases. When you pray, why would you not pray? He says, when they went to the hour of prayer, are we supposed to have just an hour of prayer when God says pray continually and never to cease? We're to have a posture of prayer, not just an hour of prayer, right? But the point here is, is that he was bold because he was literally transformed when he prayed. This truth is the same for us. When you seek God daily, and I do believe that you're seeking God day by day, moment by moment. But when your heart seeks him constantly, you've got to know that there is such a radiance that comes about. If Jesus was transformed while he prayed and he's the son of God, how much more are we going to be transformed when we pray? The countenance of the Holy One is upon us. And that gets me excited. That gets me, that, that gets me excited because you know what? I just want to look like Jesus. I want to act like, I want to walk like, I want to, when they see me, I want them to see Jesus. And I know that's true for you too. When they see us, we want them to see Jesus. We're not here to play games. We're here to be the true Gospel in flesh right here. Flesh and bones, living it out, walking it out. Isn't that true? Yes. And so I love that here Jesus was praying and his countenance changes. And he's, he's all, his face is altered, completely transformed. In our world of darkness and confusion and all the evil that's all around us, boy, do we ever need boldness. Boy, boy, do we ever need strength and courage and bravery to walk a walk of prayer. And that walk of prayer is a supernatural walk. Amen. You know, as God uses you more and more in really difficult situations, like the one I mentioned to you in the beginning with the whole transvestite, and then I went to the page and was like, whoa, okay. Just because there might be a second or two of, oh my gosh. Because the world, like when you see some of this stuff, it's quite alarming. It's quite alarming. Yes. The depth, you know, of what people have, will they tolerate what they tolerate and what they think is okay. It can be quite shocking and quite alarming. Just because you might have a second or two where you go, uh oh, and you, you feel that fear, doesn't mean that, oh, that's not your assignment. You rebuke that devil. Yeah. You command that thing to go. Yeah. You command that thing to go and say, oh, no. Uh-uh. Lord, is this my assignment? I rebuke that spirit of fear. I command that thing to go right now. I have the power. I have the love. I have the presence of God. And I'm going forth in complete, complete faith. Zero fear. I say that because as we go about, there's things that shock, they shock me. They're shocking. And I've seen a lot. But even still, there are things that are out there that sometimes you're just going, oh, my God. 
gosh, well, you have children and you have grandchildren. And of course, you put yourself in the place of their parent and you're just going, oh my goodness, like it's, it's, it's grieving, right? So, so you'll see these things, but you know, you've been equipped and you are, you are God's assignment. You are, you're on assignment and you are God's agent to bring in that change that we're talking about. So no fear at all. No fear at all. So transformation happens during prayer. What happened when Jesus was praying? He was transformed. This is not the only place he was transformed, but it's just one of the places I'm talking about. He was transformed. Boldness arose. Let's go back to talking about Peter for a moment because Peter had to make this transition. He had to make this transition from, a, from being a man that was walking as a double-minded man to a bold warrior who spoke to 3,000 people and got them saved but he, was, he didn't start out like that, did he? No. Peter did not start out as a bold, you know, he was impulsive, but he wasn't bold for Christ. There's a difference. One's being led of the Lord and one's being led of the flesh, right? So he needed to be changed by the power of prayer first. Peter did. Peter needed to be changed. So you guys remember that one minute Jesus praised him and the very next minute he rebuked him. In, in Matthew chapter 16, and in verse 17, it says, Simon Peter answered, and he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him. And he said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. He said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Blessed are you, Peter. He says, Blessed are you. Wow, Peter gets affirmed by Jesus. Pretty powerful, isn't it? But just jump up a couple scriptures and go to verse 23, same chapter. But he, meaning Jesus, turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He just got done affirming him. A couple scriptures later, he says, get behind me, Satan. Was Peter Satan? No. He wasn't Satan, but he was certainly allowing Satan to speak through him at that moment. He said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. What? What are you talking about? Jesus, what's going on here? Well, Peter was saying, oh no, Jesus, you're not going to die that kind of death. Oh no, Jesus, you're not going to be taken that soon. Oh no. You know, don't we sometimes do that? You know, you have someone that you love. Peter loved Jesus. He's like, oh, no, Lord, that's not going to happen to you. Oh, no. You know, but Jesus, being fully God and fully man, said, you don't know the things you're speaking of right now. You're speaking from your flesh. You're speaking from your soul. You want to appease me, but you're not looking to what the will of God is. When we want to appease somebody to to cause them to like us or agree with what we're saying, but we have forgotten. Is it truly the will of God that we're speaking of at this very moment, or is it of the flesh? Is it selfish? Honestly, what Peter was saying was really selfish. Jesus, I don't want you to go because I need you. I don't want you to go because I need you right here. I need you right here. But Jesus was saying, if I go, I'm going to bring the helper. When I go, I'm going to bring the Holy Spirit. I'm going to bring the one that's going to help you, that's going to live on the inside of you, that's going to literally tell you of things to come. Jesus didn't leave us alone. He never said he was going to, and he never did. Right? And so my point here is, is that there was a point in time when Peter was just being raised up, that he had not yet quite became that man of God yet, in meaning in prayer that prayerful life. But you see, when you look over the course of scripture, how that changed. Peter and John were going to the hour of prayer. I just read it to you in Acts chapter three and verse one. They were going to the hour of prayer when they met that man that was lame from birth and was crying out for money. They were going to prayer. Peter became a man of prayer because, and Peter was bold. But the boldness that he had was because now he had a prayerful life. Boldness is a result of prayer. Boldness is a result of surrendering your will for the will of God. He had to be corrected at this point in time, but God still affirmed him. God didn't kick him out and say, that's it, you're disqualified. He doesn't disqualify, but he does train up. He does lift up, raise up, because he wants you to walk in the fullness. There cannot be mixture, 
right? And so he's saying, wow, you know what, Peter? I love you too much to not tell you right here in this situation. You're actually walking in the flesh right here. I know you love me, Peter. But right here in this situation, you're talking out of your soul, not your spirit. We got to talk out of our spirit. So every one of us, and we have to be careful that we don't allow our soul to dictate, but our spirit man to walk, to, to be led by our spirit man. So he needed to be united in Christ in prayer and not be double-minded, not to be double-minded. But he learned. I'm going to, let's go back to Acts 3. Go back to Acts chapter 3. Because Peter learned, and this is just one place where he said, you know, I, I so trust you, Lord. I so love you, Jesus, that I'm making it my priority to go to prayer. In the hour of prayer. So again, I'm going to read. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Does God want you to have an hour of prayer? He wants you to have a lifestyle of prayer. <laughs> he wants you to have a lifestyle of prayer. He wants you to walk with him in such strength, in such boldness, that you will not, you will not allow... Um, situations to change your heart or your mind. So he says to be, to be prayerful, to walk a prayerful life, right? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. So the hour of prayer, and to give thanks in all things, the hour of prayer is really a, a life that's been transformed by God. See, our lives should be consistently praying. That doesn't mean you don't have a solitude time of prayer where you're focused, and you should, absolutely. But really, our lives should be a sanctuary that is constantly in communion with the Holy Spirit, constantly in communion with the Spirit of God. And the reason that I wanted to bring this message today is because when we pray, we walk in boldness. When we pray, we walk in intimacy. And when we pray, we walk in power. And the point is, is because I have had an increase of really some serious situations that have come, people needing prayer. And I mean like some serious things, right? And I know that God is doing the same for you. The only way that you're going to effectively reach out and pray for these people and commune with these, you know, have a communication with these people is when you truly are a person of prayer. It's not going to happen any other way. Don't rely on a gift. People sometimes just rely on their gift to carry them. But who is the giver of the gift in the first place? God is the giver of the gift. If you just continue to go and rely on a gift, and you rely on a gift, and you rely on a gift, but you don't go to the source, do you not know that that gift will run dry? You need, because it's not just a gift, it's attached to the body, to, the, to Christ. What's the source of that gift? It's Christ Almighty, it's His Spirit. Don't just rely on a gift, make sure you're a person of prayer. In prayer is your power. Your gift will grow as you're a person of prayer. Your gift will literally grow Amen. because you're going to rely on the Holy Spirit and you're not going to rely on your own, your own flesh and your own human abilities, even in your own giftings, right? So this message should encourage you to be a person of prayer. I, I'm going to pray. I'm going to continue. To, like he says, pray without ceasing. That means pray continually. Be a person that is so enveloped in the love of God that you wouldn't even but do that. That's there no, nothing else within you that would, would be okay with a life that would be opposite of a prayer life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm going to turn one more place. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise in the word. First Thessalonians 5, 16 and through, actually through 19, we're going to go. Uh, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit. We're going to stop right there. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. And then it says, do not quench the spirit. So when we're not doing these things, we're quenching the spirit. We need to make sure that we're doing these things or otherwise we would be quenching the spirit. When I quench the spirit, I'm putting the fire out. We're so big on the fire of God. We don't want the fire of God to be out. We want that to increase. We increase as we're people of prayer. 
You need to know that there's so much more God has for us. We, he does so much more, and it is all found at the altar of prayer. So, Father, right now, Lord, cause us to go from wherever we are with our prayer life, Lord, to the, an amazing, mighty increase. Lord God, put that burden upon us to pray. Lord, I'm asking that you would put that burden upon us to pray, not just for our own needs and our own families, but, Lord, those that you draw us to those that you bring to us lord god because they belong to somebody there's somebody's son or daughter there's somebody's child there's somebody's loved one what loved ones so father i i'm asking that you increase that burden on the inside of us that we would be people of prayer lord god that we would see and we would immediately in our spirit man start to pray not grieving the holy spirit but consistently and i know that as we do that boldness comes i've already spoken about it i've already shown them by your word boldness comes and that is so important because father it's not just about prayer there's a time and a place where you say now go and speak i want you to go and speak and that's when we need the boldness to be activated so i thank you lord god it's activated in our prayer closets i thank you lord god it's activated in the secret secret place, Father God, the boldness of the Lord. And at that right time, Lord, you send us forth to do and to speak the will of God. And you're re equipping us and preparing us. So I thank you, Lord God. Let testimonies arise, even from this message that's been taken to heart. Let testimonies of freedom, of people being saved, healed, and delivered, let them arise, Father God, as the word is being caught right now, as they're being taught and they're being caught. The word is being caught. They're being transformed. Lord, we are going from glory to glory and strength to strength so i thank you that we leave this place different changed and on fire because the word never ever changes but it equips us and it promotes us i thank you because lord god we're promoting you in the mighty name of jesus we give you the glory and all the all the praise amen give give god the praise shout out jesus we love we praise you we thank you for your word we thank you for your word it's beautiful and it's powerful Jesus' name. Amen. So don't forget, prayer leads to boldness.